ladies and gentlemen, the American P-51 Mustang. There we go. Beautiful aircraft. All right, let's get myself set up. I've got my controls down there on the lower left. I'm going to add the smoke. Three, two, one, go. And to ensure that we're all on the same page, on the left, lower left here, we've got the turn and slip indicator. So the turn is the top half and the slip is the bottom half. So we see that white line and all the warbirds and Cold War aircraft are going to have an instrument like this. The FCS aircraft is a little bit different. There we see the turn to the left. There we see the turn to the right. Okay, nothing complicated so far. Next, we're going to look at the lower half where that black ball is. Right now, we see it centered maybe slightly to the left. That means that we're ever so slightly uncoordinated. We've got a little bit of skid off to the left. Or if we like that, a little bit of skid, slip and skid. The way that we define that, if we are wings to the left right now, uh, let me uh, get my track IR back on and zoom out a little bit. We've got wings to the left, even just slightly. We see that ball is off to the left. That is a slip. If you imagine an axis following from the end of the right wing to the end of the left wing, there's a line that follows that axis. We are sliding down it, down there towards the, the ground. That is a slip. I'm gonna roll to the right now, but keep that same. I was gonna call it slip, but now that uncoordinated flight going, you see the ball is still off to the left. That means if we imagine that same line again, running from right to left, this time it's pointing into the sky, that is a skid. Both are uncoordinated flight. It's just the direction of the uncoordinated flight relative to the sky that defines whether it's a slip or a skid. So I'm going to trim out the rudder to a more neutral mode and use my pedals now. So when we turn into the right, you see there the, the ball is to the right. So we've got a very small slip down towards the ground. That is an inefficient way to fly. There's more drag generated by the aircraft when that ball is not centered. The same when we're in level flight. So what you really want to do to get the most efficiency, so by that we mean speed, the least amount of drag, saves fuel or you'll go faster, you'll fly higher, it'll give you the edge in combat, all of those things. You want to add a little bit of right rudder, which I'm doing now. Push, 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 real gentle until, there we go, the ball is centered. That is now coordinated flight and despite the heavy right hand turn, we are neither slipping nor skidding. There's no perfect setting for this because as soon as you change the angle of the bank, the speed, the angle of the climb or even the power setting, that ball is going to go. Let's demonstrate that with the power. I'm just going to cut the power and look at that ball shoot off to the left instantaneously there. So we need to recreate, recorrect a bit more left rudder, actually now needing more left rudder than right, even though we're in a right hand bank. That just shows the power of the torque from that engine. So let's add power on. And now we see the reactionary move there as the slip to the right. I'm gonna put right rudder in, regain that coordinated flight. And so now we understand how to correct. Again, if you see the ball moving to the right, press the right rudder. It's about kicking that ball back into the middle. If you see it moving out to the left, kick the left rudder and get that ball into the middle. And once you think, you know, I'm kicking right, kicking left, it feels like I'm riding a bike up here. All right, use your rudder trim. Trim it out, get it centered and about there. Happy with that. Clearly, if you have a massive change in speed or power setting or height, you're going to have to update that but for now, that will do. So with that, let's begin and pretend that we're on an approach. Because why might we... We now know how to go coordinated and we understand why. Because it's the most efficient way to fly. So why might we want to deliberately skid or slip the aircraft? And the answer is simply... These kind of aircraft have no air brakes. There's no spoilers. 
The only way to slow down is gear or flap. And we can't use those at any speed because it's going to rip off. Or it's just not appropriate, yeah? We're not coming into land, we're over enemy territory, whatever. We just want to slow down real quick. But it's mainly would be used for um, an approach. We want to lose height quickly. To demonstrate how effective of an air brake this is, I'm going to actually increase power. Let's go to maximum power. Full RPM, full power. I'm absolutely 100%. Not going to go war, but let's leave it like that. Look at my speed on the left hand side. I'm going to try flying level and I'm going to aim for the tip of this island that sticks out into this lake. Say island, I think it might actually be connected. To, yeah, it's connected. Okay, never mind. Let's continue flying towards this tip. We know what we're talking about. I'm going to trim out the aircraft. And look at that speed. We're almost... 400 miles an hour and we're in a slight descent. I'm going to keep flying towards that tip, not change the power and I'm going to start skidding or slipping which one you decide I'm going to add more and more right rudder, more and more left roll to keep heading towards that tip now look at my aircraft speed still flying towards the tip I'm not climbing despite the high nose attitude. Look at the speed of the aircraft. Listen to the sound the aircraft's making. Still got full power. No flaps, no gear. still losing height and there we have it that is how much drag is created by that move the full power in a clean p51 mustang is still unable to keep the speed going despite being at sea level and if i held that in and held it in eventually we would reach crossover angle of attack and at that point the aircraft would spin out one of the wings would stall and we would fall into the ground. So here we are, I thought I might as well demonstrate this landing. We're coming in to land on this runway that we see here. And we're clearly far too high, far too fast. So what I'm going to do is cut the power, add the RPM in, and I'm going to right rudder, get that slip into the left. Now we see the ball out to the left. If we come to the external view, I'm going to zoom in. You see there, we're literally falling down towards the left. You see it just as it passes in front of the camera. The aircraft is clearly falling to the left. Down that way, which is exactly the way that we want to go. Slipping towards the ground. Here as we approach, uh, I'm going to slowly pull up real gentle because I don't want to spin out here. I'm just pulling up to get to the point where I can pop the gear still got that slip going got a lot of rudder in despite where the ball is there's the gear there's the flap and again don't just let go of the rudder I'm gonna smoothly let go gonna cross it through the other side a bit keep that going and let go real smooth there we got it and there that is a perfect And there you have it. I hope you found that one useful and enjoyable. I really appreciate all the new feedbacks and subscribers I've had. I can't believe it's already gone to over 100 subscribers in that space of time. Genuinely appreciate that. There's been some really nice comments left by people. Things like, I learn something every time you put out a video. These are good. Keep going, man. When you make a channel and you get those comments like that, they mean so much. And those of you who have done YouTube channels and gotten those comments, you know exactly what I'm on about. So if you don't, believe me, please keep those comments going. Really appreciating it. I've got a Twitch channel where I'm getting into the whole live streaming thing that's shown on here. That's the XS DNA. Again, it's DCS and all flying stuff. Sometimes touch on other sim stuff. And 
I'm working on one other thing. It's not out yet. It's going to be a big surprise when it does drop. It would be really nice to have you around when that does hit. So subscribe and keep up to date with more. I uh, will be releasing further details real soon on that because it's, uh, it's a real big project and I'm looking really forward to do it. It's going to become full time. So with that, take care and have a good morning, afternoon, evening and good night, depending on wherever in the world you are. Bye bye.